hey guys welcome back to my channel let's discuss one short prose that's my lost dollar by stephen lee cock remember the chapter name my lost dollar by stephen lee cock about the author stephen lee cock 1869-1944 was a canadian humorist educator political economist he may well be described as a bridge between two centuries. He graduated from Upper Canada College, joined University of Toronto in 1887. 1889, he took to teaching. Success of his first humorous article published in Grip, a Toronto magazine in 1894, encouraged him to continue to write. His first book of humorous writing, Literacy Labs, came out in 1910. He was a prolific writer whose last book was Humor, its theory, technique, published in 1935. Besides, he published biographies of Mark Twain, Charles Dickens in 1932, 1933, respectively. Let's move on to the chapter. My friend Todd owes me a dollar. My friend, my, the narrator. He says that his friend Todd borrowed a dollar from him he has owed it to me for 12 months it's been 12 months he has not returned it i fear there is little prospect of his ever returning it i can realize whenever i meet him that he has forgotten that he owes me a dollar the writer says that he gave a dollar to his friend it's been 12 months he has not returned it yet and there is no chance of he is ever returning it. He meets him in the same frank, friendly way as always. My dollar has clean gone out of his mind. I see that I shall never get it back. So the reader says that he meets him regularly, but it seems that the, the dollar has gone out of his mind. He never discusses that, and even I don't do that. But he says that, on the other hand, I know that I shall remember all my life that Todd owes me a dollar. But he says that, narrator, but I will remember throughout my life that he owes me a dollar. He has to give me a dollar. It will make no difference. I trust to our friendship, but I shall never be able to forget it. He said it won't make any difference in our friendship, but I will never forget it. I don't know how it is with other people, but if any man borrows a dollar from me, I carry the recollection of it to the grave. Narrator says that, I don't know what other people do, but whenever I uh, borrow any dollar from anyone, I never forget it. I carry the, uh, this in my memory uh, to the grave. It means I never forget it. Let me relate what happened. Now he'll tell you what happened, that he gave uh, Todd a dollar. It's been 12 months, he has not written it yet. Now he'll tell how he gave him a dollar, or rather, how Todd borrowed a dollar from him. Todd borrowed this dollar last year on 8th of April. So it was on 8th of April, Todd took a dollar from the narrator. Just, he was about to leave for Bermuda. He was going to Bermuda. Remember this Bermuda. He needed a dollar in change to pay his taxi. He wanted to pay his taxi fare, that's why he took a dollar from the narrator. I lent it, I lent it to him. It happened quite simply and naturally. I hardly realized it, it was all over. He merely said, certainly, is a dollar enough? I believe, in fact, I know that when Todd took that dollar, he meant to pay for it. Now, so narrator, out of his love for Todd, told him, is just one dollar enough? And he said, yes. And the narrator believes that he thought that Todd would return that dollar on time or in time. He sent me a note from Hamilton, Bermuda. So when he went to Bermuda from there, he sent him a note. I thought when I opened it, that dollar would be in it. Narrator says, when I got the note, I thought there, there would be a, a dollar in that, but it wasn't. He merely said that temperature was up to nearly 100, the figure misled me for a moment. And what was written in that on note that the temperature of Bermuda, it was 100. Todd came back in three weeks. I met him at the train not 
trade, not because of the dollar, but because I really esteem him. Now he says, narrator, out of his love, he says, I went to uh, pick him up at station, not for dollar, but because I respect him, I regard him. I felt it would be nice for him to see someone waiting for him on the platform after being away for three weeks. I said, let's take a taxi up to club, but he answered, no, let's walk. So, narrator went him, why? Because he wanted to, he wanted Todd to feel good that someone else, someone has come to pick him up. And when they met at, at station, I said, I mean the narrator, he said, let's take a taxi up to the club. But Todd answered, no, let's walk. We spent the evening together talking about Bermuda. I was thinking of dollar, but of course I didn't refer to it. Now they were discussing about Bermuda because Todd had has written from Bermuda and narrator he has a dollar in his mind. One simple one simply can't. He says one simply can't refer to the amount because if you uh, lend someone money and when it comes to taking it back, we feel a little bit shy or hesitant. Same thing is happening here. I asked him what currency is used in Bermuda whether the American dollar goes at par. I put a slight emphasis on American dollar, found again that I could not bring myself to make any reference to it. Now, very cleverly, narrator mentions dollar. He asks Todd about currency of Bermuda and he gives his stress to American dollar. He says, is American dollar at par with uh, Bermuda currency? Why? Because why does he men mention American dollar? Because he had given him a dollar and he wants it back now. But unfortunately, Todd does not remember it. Todd does, does not want to uh, return or repay that dollar. It took me some time. I see Todd practically every day at my club to realize that he has completely forgotten the dollar. So narrator said, after some time, I got to know that Todd has completely forgotten about the dollar. I asked him one day what his trip cost him when he, and he said that he kept no accounts. One day, I met him at club. I asked him about his trip and how much amount uh, it cost him, but he made no mention of his trip. He said he kept no accounts of that. I little later asked him if he felt settled down after his trip. And he said he had practically forgotten about it, so I know it was all over. In all this, I bear thought no grudge. But narrator says that, let it be anything, but I have no grudge, no ill feeling or resentment towards thought. I have simply added him to the list of men who owes me a dollar and who have forgotten it. He said, I have just added him in my list because a narrator has made a list of people who he uh, had given money, a dollar. There are quite a few of them now. I make no difference in my demeanor to them, but I only wish that I could forget. He says that narrator, I had given a lot of people money uh, that borrowed from him, but he says that I have made a list, but it makes no difference now and it, ha it has not changed my behavior towards them. But he says, I wish I could forget that amount. But he is not actually able to forget it. But meantime, a thought, a rather painful thought has begun to come to, into my mind at intervals. It's this, if thought owes me a dollar and has forgotten it, it's possible indeed, it's theoretically probable that there must be men to whom I owe a dollar which I have forgotten. Now he tries to actually console himself. He says that uh, it may happen that even I might have taken a dollar or money from someone and I even might have forgotten about it. So it's not a big deal. I think I should uh, forget it. There may be a list of them. There may be a list of them, uh, the people from whom I've taken a dollar. It may happen that even I might have taken or borrowed a dollar from people and I uh, couldn't return because of some reason. The more I think of it, the less I like it because I am quite sure if I had forgotten a dollar, I should never pay it on the side of the grave. But he says, narrator, 
if it is so if i have taken a dollar from someone i am sure that i will not be able to pay it now uh, on the side of my grave means till i am alive if there are such men i want them to speak out he says if there are such men whom he thinks uh narrator taken money from he says if there are such men they should not keep quiet they should speak out not all at once but in reasonable number as far as maybe in alphabetical order or i will immediately write their names down on paper he says at least some people should come and speak out if they uh, lend money to someone so they should uh, ask for their money ah uh, he says i don't count here men who may have lent me an o dollar over a bridge table but i'm not thinking of man who lent me 30 cents to pay for a bottle of plain soda in detroit athlete club last month now he remembers a scene where in detroit athlete club a person lent him 30 cents 30 cents remember to pay to pay for a bottle of plain soda which he had taken from that fellow i always find that there is nothing like plain soda after a tiring ride across the canadian frontier and that man who advanced that 30 cents knows exactly why i felt i had done enough for him now he says that i don't know why that fellow had given me 30 cents that time and he says that he has forgotten that now but if any man ever lent me a dollar to pay for a taxi when i was staring for bermuda i want to pay now he says that that was different scene actually when he wanted to have a soda but he says but if someone give me a dollar to pay for my taxi he says i was starting for if i go for bermuda but i will definitely pay i will definitely repay that dollar more than that i want to start a general movement he says more than that actually people are speaking out i want to start a general movement what is that movement name back to honesty movement for paying all these odd dollar that are borrowed in moments of expansion generosity he says that uh, i want to start a movement general movement uh, namely honesty movement why this movement will let all the debtors debtors actually they'll pay their loan from where they have taken so he says that i want everyone to come ahead and repay let's remember that greatest nations were built on the rock basis of absolute honesty he says that let's remember the greatest nations in the world they 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 were built on rock basis of absolute honesty strong base of absolute honesty so people should be honest 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 is the best policy so he says that in conclusion may i say that i do particularly ask that no reader of this book will be careless enough to leave this copy round where it might be seen by major thord of university club of montreal he says there in conclusion he say i want everyone to inform thord about this about a dollar about a deal between uh, between him and the thord he says i want everyone to uh, show a copy of this text to tord who is working in university club of montreal um, montreal so this is the end of this chapter it's very simple very very simple so uh, i've got some uh, multiple choice questions we'll try to answer them first one what did tord o the speaker yes what did tord o the speaker a cent a pound a rupee a dollar so it's very simple a dollar second for how long did thord o the speaker the amount 12 days 112 years 12 years 12 months it yes 12 days or months let's go back and try to recollect if you see here he say uh
12 months yes 12 months is the correct answer so you will say 12 months next after returning from bermuda todd preferred to dash up to the club take a taxi go by train walk or take a bus he prefers to walk he said let's walk good when the speaker met todd over dinner he was talking about poland bermuda a dollar his plan he was talking about poland not about a dollar how much did speaker borrow from person in the detroit athlete club three thirty dollar thirty pound thirty cents thirty cents yes good what does speaker expect all people to do to speak out what did Todd's note from Bermuda contain? Dollar mention of temperature, a bird they get card, a visiting card. It's a mention of temperature. In the story, Stephen Leacock lost his pound, dollar, pence, and rupee. So it's a dollar. Who is Todd to the narrator? Friend, uncle, cousin. My friend Todd. So remember, so Todd. Good. What was speaker's intention in suggesting that they take a taxi to the club? Todd will pay the taxi. The club was far. Remind Todd about the dollar he borrowed. So this was the intention. Remind Todd about the dollar he borrowed. What kind of list narrator had mailed? Who has to be added to the list? Grocery list, book list narrator, list of people who owe him a dollar, Todd. Yes. 12. How, according to the author, are great nations built? Mindful of fear, truth and dare, rock basis on absolute honesty. This is the correct answer. On the rock basis of absolute honesty. Last one. Why did Todd borrow a dollar from the narrator? Buy an ice cream, change to pay for a train ride to Bermuda, change to pay the taxi. So, so change to pay the taxi for that. He had borrowed uh, a dollar from the narrator. So this is a very simple text. In this, uh, let me just recap. We have narrator, writer, Stephen Leacock, his friend Todd. Todd was going to Bermuda, so he didn't have change. So he took uh, a dollar from narrator. And narrator wants, wants it back actually, but he's not able to... Uh, ask it out of hesitation or out of you can say embarrassment it happens actually so at last what happens Todd seems to forget about it and uh, narrator reminds him uh, keeps reminding him uh, all the time tells him that about mentions about American dollar ask him a Bermuda trip ask him about so many things remember uh, Todd does not listen to that uh, it seems that he doesn't want to talk about that and uh, then he says that uh, one day he was in uh, Detroit club he had taken a uh, narrator 30 cents from a fellow and he says it might have happened that same way I have forgotten about that he might have forgotten but he doesn't he, he remembers that and he, he wants everyone to speak out speak out about about this not to keep mum not to keep quiet so he talks about that at last story ends but he does not get his dollar and he requests all the readers those who are reading this text to uh, take a copy of this text to major todd who is in university of uh, montreal so that he know about it so thank you very much hope you've enjoyed this video stay tuned for more videos on linguistics and literature thank you very much